Hello there. I'm Mike Morales here in San Antonio. You're watching Sipping Off the Cuff, a tequila aficionado media and probably our YouTube channel. I'm here in San Antonio. That young man out there is... Rick Levy in San Diego. Rick, we have taken the tour. The tour de force of no... Was it 1477? 1477. Tequilero Puerto de Hero. Uh, and for those and of you... Tonight. Who are, oh, Yes. Tonight, look at look at what we got. Mira, look in the box, fresh out of the box, direct from from uh, from the the distributor in uh, in. Well, it says Whittier, but um, um, it's Pico Rivera. Anyway, uh, Mandala Night Mandala Extra Añejo. Look at this! Look at this bottle. It is a beautiful bottle. That is, this is all handmade, ladies and gentlemen. Look at, mira, mira. Yeah, it's a beautiful example of, uh, you know, I, th I guess you'd call this high fire stoneware. I don't know what you call it. I call it and, really hard to make. <laughs> yeah. Well, Jalisco is actually uh, a center for ceramics in Mexico, in addition to tequila. Well, you know, if anybody's been to Tlaquepaque or if they've been to, you know, those areas there where, where they get Tonala, you know, you, you've seen a lot of handmade stuff. And, 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 and the nicer tequila bottles, some of the older ones, come in bottles that are made there exclusively. So um, this is really beautiful. I mean, I, some of you may have seen the video. There's a video if you check out Facebook uh, or even um, uh, Instagram. You may have seen the video of how, you know the the people who are making this, the craftspeople who are making this by hand and firing it, and it looks like a, like they're making a huge tortilla or something, man. It's just, <laughs> and it's, this artwork is raised as well, so it's not just painted on; it's you know paint over uh, over a relief. Yes, yeah, it's very tactile. Very, it it really feels good. Uh, you know, not only will it look nice on your bar, but but it's a, got a good hand feel. You know, you're not you're not afraid to hold on to it and pour from it. Well, actually, you may be afraid to pour from it because it is a round bottle. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it has a an artificial uh, a synthetic cork, also. And tonight, Rick, I'm gonna I'm gonna go on a limb and I'm gonna use a Bermioli for for All this. Right. For this one, what do we know about this about this tequila, Rick? It, for, of course, it's a, it's an extra añejo. It's an extra añejo. It is aged seven years in used French oak, previously used for wine. Right. So that that explains the 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 kind of the red tones that you might see on the the kind of the brassy tones that you might see uh, on the on the juice. And uh, it does come from uh, Puerto de Hero, uh, 1477 in El Arenal. The, uh, so that would be the, uh, you know, southeast outskirts of Arenal. Wow, this, this extra añejo, it's not running. It's, it's clinging to my glass. The, the tears are very yeah. slow, very slow. I'm getting slow. some really thick legs on mine. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. I mean, it's not it's not runny coming. You know, it it's thick. So it's interesting. We had just reviewed uh, Don Alberto Extra Añejo from the same distillery, which right. was a five year XA uh, in used French oak barrels, but they had polished it in used American oak whiskey barrels. Right. Uh, whereas this one is seven years in used wine barrels. Well, used French oak barrels that have previously out. used for wine. And, yeah, and don't forget, you know, we 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 don't want to neglect to say that these these barrels, in order to be reused, have to be recharred and scraped and rinsed and all that stuff. So they have been really sweet nose. And, and I'm not, you know, if I had to compare it to the Don Alberto, I'm not getting any of the, I'm not getting any super 
dried fruit so much as I'm yeah. getting more spices. I'm getting more spices. Exactly. And not um, that that's a bad thing. It's just different. I might be picking up a little bit more of those bitter notes that we're used to from French oak. Okay. Here. But it's still, you know, sweet as opposed to like a dark chocolate. What do you think? Of, what do you think of the the nose? I will say if I had, and I, I shouldn't compare it to to Don Alberto, but but for j just because we had just tasted it. For those of you who are watching one after the other, some of you have watched, you know, may have maybe watching it all out of sequence. But this this doesn't have any of the fruit, you know, the dried fruit notes that that I enjoyed in the previous uh, in the previous extra añejo. This one is is all French oak, seven years, and and so it's going to have more of those tones that that Rick had pointed out. Yeah, even the spices um, that uh, we had been getting are a bit more muted in this. Yeah, they're muted, and it's not our glassware. We're using we're using both of us are using some crystal glassware that that are are fairly reliable. So if it, if there's any flaws in the tequila we'll know about it and if there's any anything um anything hidden or unusual that that you wouldn't normally get with other glassware we would know about it also but i'm i it's more tamed it's more tamed down than, mm -hmm. than you know the it's not as complex let's put it that way and maybe the uh additional years you know it is a seven year xa so it's yeah. been in wood for a long time there, there's, there are people who, uh, you know, old school guys who say that if it's, if it's aged anything over five years, it's going to taste like anything other than tequila. And, and you're probably right. I may be yeah. even getting some wine notes. I, I, you know, I don't know. Yeah, I think there's a good chance of that. Well, let's it's find not, out. you know, I can't really, I'm not really pulling out agave notes. You know, if no. you were to give this to me, I couldn't, you know, try to peg highlands or lowlands. No, if you didn't know where the distillery was, you you yeah, you, you know, are, it's all are, it's all barrel. So, yeah. you know, if yeah, you're an oakhead, if you're an oakhead, so far so good, right? Sweet. Wow. Oh, wow. That oh. is really sweet. Wow, yeah. It stays uh, on it stays on the palate. Like I don't know if I would I would go as far as to say that it's cloying, but you know, the sweetness is really is lingering. Um, it's no, it's not it's not cloying, but it's a hair under that. Yeah. Uh for some of you who are not used to this kind of a sweetness, you might even call it a cloying sweetness. Um, the the flavors are designed to coat your palate, and it does that proficiently. I've got I've got I've got flavor on the roof of my mouth, man. Yeah. Wow. I'm getting uh you know like some some baking spices, you know that kind of wood spice. Uh. Maybe I feel like I might be picking up some of the wine. Are you getting any cinnamon? Maybe there's the kind of spice. Sure. Like a, yeah, like I would throw cinnamon, cinnamon in there. Like that. I say that because you know we, you and I have had some some infused tequilas with with unusual cinnamon, mm. and you expect this kind of a flavor profile in an infused tequila. Yeah, and you also expect some sweetness with an infusion. You know, it's. Because you know, if it's especially if it's pitched as a liqueur, sure. Um, but this one, this one, I think is just a hair under being cloying and being a liqueur. Yeah. All right. Um, is there a market for it? Probably so. Probably so. You could. I could even see how you could use this in place of a liqueur in a in a mixed drink. Oh. Oh yeah. Yeah, you know, um, like this would pair really well with like some orange zest. Um, 
You know the the, the there's a there's a one of our, one of my favorite chocolates is the is a dark chocolate it comes it looks like an orange, and you break it you you pop it and it and it breaks into slices. This would be great to pair with a with actually not a bitter chocolate but with a sweet chocolate. With a sweet chocolate. This this would be yeah. a really good pairing tequila, I think. You know we were talking about how the Don Alberto was, I think strictly after dinner aperitif. I I couldn't even try to imagine to 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 uh, pair it with yeah. a cigar you know that's the dessert in and of itself where is this you know you could pair it with a with a sweet chocolate or the uh the chocolate orange yeah um and, and in fact you'll probably get notes of orange um i'm sure it, mixologists could do things with this but um i think what, the price point the price is point? like I, I think it's around one thirty-five, one forty-five. So, um, be prepared. you know, the there's a, there's a, it's a substantial bottle. It really is a collector's piece. Yeah, the, you know, the bottle the, is a collector's piece. I'm, you know, it's beautiful. Brand of promise nominee right away in the in the in the in the, in the bottling, you know, because in that packaging, because that's just gorgeous. It's art. Um. I don't know if I, I, I don't, it's going to be really difficult for me to, to say that this is a, a flavor profile that I would lean to, but between you, me, and whoever's watching the fence post, could we nominate this as a brand of promise in the extra Anejo category, or would we be asking too much? Uh, I wouldn't. I wouldn't be against, you know, putting it in that group. Um, okay. I'm, I'm not sure how I. I'm not sure if it's going to be in like the uh, you know the top tier of the competition in that group. Yeah, I'm not sure if it would. I'm like you. I'm not sure that it would hold its own in that category, for what we have going on, you know, with with our. Uh, Brands of Promise nominees in the extra añejo category. I, I I I say that I'm okay with nominating it in that category. I'm just not sure that it would hold its own compared to you know because at that point you compare it to the others. You have to. Yeah. That's what you know. <clears throat> and you know the others in that category is going to be the kind where you could pour a snifter and spend you know, a couple hours with it. Where is this? Um, you know, I think you would want to have this in a smaller portion in as a pairing, an accompaniment to something. Yeah. Um, uh, I don't know that I could spend um, a couple hours uh, with this profile. If you've never had anything uh, aged in French oak, you may, you may fall in love with this. God's honest truth. But if you're if you look for more complexity in your extra añejos, you're not going to get it with this one. This was pretty straightforward, Rick. It's just straightforward. There's nothing complex about it, except that it's a French oak wine bar- uh, French oak wine barrel. Yeah. Okay, and it's seven years. And um, it's a beautiful bottle. But yeah. It's, uh... You know, sweet and and baking spice. Um, yeah. What do you think? What you? I I don't. Honestly, I I don't see it holding its own against the other extra añejos. Not that it's a bad extra añejo. That don't get me wrong. This is not a bad extra añejo. It's just that if you're looking for your complexity, I mean, that's what people look for. In, in their extra nejos, they're looking for complexity. I want to know why I'm spending 130, 140, 150, 165 bucks for this bottle. Talk to me. And yeah. if, if you've had stuff in French oak and maybe at a cheaper price, you're going to go, ah, you know, it's not talking to me. It's, it's just there's no real complexity at this level there should be. In my opinion, but that's my opinion. You know, <laughs> and I, I would I, agree. 
I think it's I think it's worthy to go. You know, if you want to try it and you love the bottle and you're an oak head and you and you particularly love stuff in French oak, have at it. Absolutely. Um, I think the only thing that I I could do with this just just for my own sake is to just nominate this one in as brand of promise in the in the packaging category because it's beautiful. I mean, empty I would probably pay hundred thirty bucks. <laughs> you know, um, I I just I was expecting more complexity, and and you know. Compared to to the to the Don Alberto, yeah. and they, you and, know they might have overshot the mark with the seven years or something. I think so too. I I think I think they they probably if they went back to the drawing board and maybe pulled it out at five years or six years and did something different with it, you know I don't know I I don't make tequila, but um, I I just don't feel that it that that Wandala will hold its own compared to what we have already in that category, and not just in our categories, but just in the categories in general. Out in the you know, you could you could probably find something more comparable with with more complexity and feel better about about the pricing. I you know, I, I, sorry to say, I uh, is it a worthy try? Yes, absolutely. Um, but you know, and, and and Rick and I are up front. We've told you already. We're not, we're not Añejo drinkers. We're not extra Añejo guys. It's not like we're oak heads. We go straight for the white stuff first, because <laughs> that's for because for us, you know, that's a great indicator of how the rest of the line is going to taste, right? And yeah. I think with the barrel management that they did with the Don Alberto versus what they had with Mandala. I think Don Alberto is the star of the show. And if we were to pick, you know, one representative from Puerto de Hierro, it would probably be Don Alberto. And, and I, I wouldn't so much pick this one unless I was looking for a, a beautiful design bottle. And I'm not going to lie to you. This bottle is beautiful. So you guys decide. I, I'm, I'm, I think our brand of promise nomination is going to stick to, to packaging. I, I would feel better and I feel better for the brand also, you know, because at this point it really is up to the, uh, up to the, up to you guys who are watching, you know, if, if, if you want to give it a shot, you want to give it a try. Absolutely. By all means. Um, I, I think it's very pleasant. It's not, it's, it's a hair under cloying as we said, uh, and it does, it will coat your palate. So be prepared for that, and of course your price point. But I think I think we've just about covered That's everything. Our <laughs> That's our take. On on Mandala, very worthy a brand of promise in the uh, in the packaging category. Lovely bottle. Thanks again to uh, to uh, Glass Bottom Distributors for making this happen because they made it happen. Um, and you know, you guys tell us if you've had it. Down below in the comments, if you're watching on on on, uh, on YouTube, let us know what you think. Okay, maybe you completely disagree with us, and we're just out in left field. Tell us; we'd be more than happy to. I'd be more than happy to hear. Please, please tell me I'm wrong. You know, or, or, <laughs> give me what you think. You know, um, not a bad tequila. I've I, you and I have had way worse. You know, in 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 repos and añejos. But for for the for that category, I think it needed a, it needed a, a bit more complexity for me to hang around with it, yeah. you know. So, but that's just that's just us. Anyway, thanks for watching. I'm Mike Morales here in San Antonio. That gentleman there is Rick Levy in San Diego. You've been watching Sipping Off the Cuff on Tequila Aficionado and YouTube. And as we say here, tomar sabiamente. Sip wisely. <laughs>